My name is Jared Wedderburn Bishop with the World Preservation Foundation. This talk will look at why we have a sense of urgency, why the shorter lived climate forces may be critical to solving this climate crisis, how agriculture contributes to these agents, how deforestation, open fires and reforestation can draw down substantial amounts of CO2 and how livestock production provides a wide reaching solution. The UK Tyndall Centre believes we are facing four degrees of temperature rise. This could lead to catastrophic climate change if we hit tipping points. A major 2011 report by UNEP and WMO found that the two degree warming limit will not be achievable with CO2 reductions alone, that warming can be limited to less than two degree by 2050 if SLCFs are mitigated and that CO2 reductions are still essential. The IPCC Fourth Assessment Physical Science Basis, Figure 2.22, shows the climate forcing effect of each of the gases emitted in the year 2000. At the left we see this shows the warming over 100 years, the period normally used to compare greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, shown in the top red bar, warms far more over 100 years than methane, in yellow in the lower bar. The bottom half of the same Figure 2.22 shows the warming effect averaged over 20 years, not 100. Methane in yellow in the second bar now warms just as much as carbon dioxide above. Adding the warming from methane, tropospheric ozone and black carbon, all circled here in blue, we see that over 20 years these three will warm the atmosphere far more than the carbon dioxide emitted that year. So what are the shorter lived climate forces? Black carbon comes from incomplete combustion of organic matter from cook stoves, diesel exhausts and open burning. It lasts from one to four weeks and its global warming potential over 20 years is 1,600 times that of carbon dioxide. Methane has a warming impact 72 times that of carbon dioxide over 20 years but lasts in the atmosphere about 12 years. Tropospheric ozone or ground level ozone, it's estimated to have a warming impact equal to about 20% of that of carbon dioxide and it stays in the atmosphere for only around 20 days. Black carbon warms the atmosphere by absorbing sunlight and warms strongly when it lands on ice or snow. Most black carbon mitigation focuses on inefficient brick kilns and cook stoves and diesel exhaust filters. These are key initiatives and will also play an important role in improving air quality and addressing health concerns. But the largest source of black carbon is open fire, a great proportion of which is fires that are lit to control forest regrowth and to maintain pasture. Dr Drew Schindel at NASA has determined that black carbon may be responsible for more than 30% of the most recent warming in the Arctic, and recently Professor Ramanathan of Scripps has discovered that black carbon warming in the Himalayan region is three to five times more than expected. Let's look at Antarctica and the role of agriculture. The Antarctic Peninsula is the fastest warming place on Earth. Recently, a team of Brazilian researchers discovered significant amounts of black carbon on the Antarctic Peninsula. From atmospheric, snow surface and ice core measurements, they determined that this was from South America, Africa and even India. If we look at the proportion of black carbon from deforestation for grazing and livestock feed, we find that around half of the black carbon in Antarctica is attributable to grazing management practices. This suggests that grazing practices are the most significant black carbon contributor to Antarctic melting. The largest source of anthropogenic methane is livestock. Ruminant animals like cows and sheep produce methane directly and livestock are a source of methane from biomass burning and waste. One third of methane emissions comes from fugitive emissions from coal mining, from leaky pipes and insufficient flaring of residual gases from oil refining. In Brazil, a large livestock producer, we see that livestock are responsible for 75% of its total methane emissions. Energy sector methane mitigation is very successful when applied to gas and oil refinery and transport. However, the largest source of energy fugitive emissions is from coal mining. Methane has been successfully captured in some underground mines, however this is minor when compared to emissions from open cut mines and coal seam gas production. 
Grass-fed ruminants produce up to four times more methane than lot-fed, and lot-feeding does offer other opportunities to reduce emissions. Methane has been successfully captured from feedlot waste, although this is not common due to cost, and adding oils to feed gives a 6-12% to reduction in methane emissions, but also not common. Genetic modification to grow smaller cattle has also been proposed. What works against lot feeding is that cattle must be grass fed for most of their life and finished on grain, and there are animal welfare, environmental, health and pollution concerns. Researchers from both Dalhousie University and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine have concluded that technological solutions are not sufficient to reduce livestock emissions, drawing the conclusion that reduced consumption of animal proteins will be necessary. Methane mitigation meets with some resistance and often becomes the butt of jokes. Ground level ozone is one of the most harmful components of smog. It affects the health of plants as seen here and is very harmful to humans. Its warming impact is about 20% of that of carbon dioxide. Researchers from Harvard, the Argonne National Laboratory and the EPA found that the best means of reducing ground level ozone is to reduce methane and we saw previously the largest sources of methane. We'll now look at deforestation and reforestation. Each year we cut down 13 million hectares of forest, mostly in the tropics. Clearing for livestock and feed for livestock is responsible for about 60 to 80 percent of all clearing. You can see that Brazil figures prominently here. Deforestation is responsible for over a quarter of global greenhouse emissions and soil carbon is lost from deforestation, from grazing pressure and cropping. In Brazil, Cattle are responsible for about 80% of all deforestation in the Amazon region. Until recently deforestation has slowed in Brazil, but now tree clearing laws have been relaxed and the rate has been rapidly increased. The Brazilian government plans to double the national herd, which is now over 200 million cattle, so the deforestation pressure will increase. If deforestation and pasture management fires are reduced, Forests grow back naturally from seeds and roots, particularly in the tropics and subtropics. Regrowth could soak up 20 years of carbon dioxide emission within 50 years. We believe this to be a major key to drawing down legacy emissions. Now to return to black carbon, fire is used to retard regrowth and encourage pasture growth for livestock. 80 to 90 percent of open fires are deliberately lit and anthropogenic fires release 15% of global emissions. Livestock dominate global population pressure. We now breed 64 billion livestock each year. Livestock outweigh wildlife by 8 to 1. They now consume 6 times what the dinosaurs did and 5 times what humans consume. They provide only 40% of our protein intake and 70% of our energy intake. This is the heart of the issue. Humanity has artificially created a huge burden for planet Earth. This consumption places a crippling burden on the Earth's food security, water security, climate and our health. The UNEP recently identified agriculture and our food consumption as one of the most significant drivers of environmental pressures, especially in loss of biodiversity, climate change, water use and toxic emissions. The report stated that a substantial reduction of impacts will only be possible with a substantial worldwide diet change away from animal products. Here is a summary of the food, water security, environmental and health benefits to be had from a substantial reduction in livestock consumption. To summarise, livestock contributes about half of the black carbon in West Antarctica. It's the largest source of methane, the largest source of nitrous oxide, it's responsible for three quarters of deforestation, a large proportion of soil carbon loss and a large proportion of open fire. Potentially ceasing livestock agriculture frees up 70% of all agricultural land for reforestation and soil carbon restocking. A study by the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency found that we can reduce the cost of climate change abatement by as much as 80% with diet change. These policy imperatives logically follow the findings in this paper. 
Our window of opportunity is closing, but it's not too late.